Okay, goodness gracious. Yeah, we'll just... We'll merge iRacing and... I miss my bimming voice. <laughs> racing high heels. Was that uh, a petition to bring back the voice changer? No. no. <laughs> wow. You know what? I really enjoyed it. Thank I you. Like Me too. I had so much more gravitas. Your, your regular voice is, is perfect. You don't need to make it perfect. Perfect. Wow. In real life, I sound like a teenager just kind of having a moment. <laughs> so sad. <laughs> Oh, you sound good. Sounds good. Sounds good. But Galileo, um, in in better news, at least you can write emo revival music, write and sing. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I'm just gonna do a My Chemical Romance cover band. <laughs> Sweet. I'll join. Great. Oh, okay. Let's go ahead and get this started. Um, we've got a lot to cover. T do we have everybody here on the sand server side? No, we don't actually. We're we're trying to get them all. Who is late? Oh boy. Oh boy. Ugh, Bowden. Uh, Bowden. Yeah, Bowden's usually late, so we're waiting. Uh, how can you miss true, 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 true. <laughs> How can you miss Bowden's avatar Where's right now? Bowden wind in one then. Bowden's here, can you raise his hand? <laughs> can you no, raise that too, hand? It's too intimidating. It's too heavy. I've been told not to. I love that there's like a, a lollipop just stuck through the hand as if it was impaled into it. Well, there hasn't been a lollipop built to scale yet for these hands, so... Well, that, add that to the feature request. That's going to be part of the yep. weekly. Yeah, please, somebody request that so we can do it. Oversized I lollipop. I can't request it, yeah, conflict of interest and all, but Pop on my if list. a user does. Oh my god. If only god. we had a feature coming up to help you reposition accessories or something like that. <laughs> if only. <laughs> <laughs> That's cruel. Okay, we're still waiting? Are we still waiting? Hey there, we're um, waiting for Sari and Stanley, um, but they can't get in, but they, because the experience is full. Oh, there's too many of us here. The mm, community what? is Sorry. growing. Is official lamb avatar? I nominate yes. Daisy Gator. <laughs> oh, Daisy, not even here. Sorry, Daisy's not even here. <laughs> to protect herself. <laughs> oh, sorry, I have to do this. <laughs> um, no, I think um, I'd like to ask some of the Lindens who are here or not, gonna, or not speaking um, for this presentation or discussion to make way for those who are going to speak. You can watch. You can watch on Twitch, Mixer, Steam, and YouTube. Awesome! I'll go on YouTube then. Bye. Incredible amount. Oh, thank you. Bye, Seno. Oh, the one with the cutest avatar. Oh, that was excellent. Super cool after. Yeah. Ah, your mic's open. Oh, thanks. God. Uh, while we're waiting, we should play some meatloaf. I'll go ahead and get it started. Please don't. Wow, Dalabut. Slash ban Galileo. No, I'm kidding. There are too many Lindens. Okay, who? Oh, we got a Starry coming in. And Stanley. Well, every well, everybody on uh, the internet hey, will be getting started in a second. Here? The only other solution would be for us uh. all to jump to another space, allow Astari and Stanley to join, and then luck of the draw, rejoin again. Um, Ooh, that sounds Nexus. fun. Yeah. Where do we all want to go to so they can jump in? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. Oh, dang. I don't know where that link is. Um... We could go to the social club and then join back here. Is Skylar presenting or here or AFK? I don't actually know if Skylar has anything. Of Ooh, Skylar. Skylar's in the back in the hamburger shirt there. I think we still have probably too many people. Even if Skylar left, they would still prevent Starry and Stanley from joining in. Stanley, Stanley is, is here. here. We're oh, just waiting Stanley's for Starry. Okay. Serb, that's a great sign. Thank you, thank you. Oh, okay. We got to keep this hamburger out of here. Who's uh, who's here for the first time? Me. I have not been to this party. Me. 
Hurry in, Astari. We've got uh, somebody in the Dr. Murder. Yeah. I see you back there. Look like you're about to walk onto the set of the most dangerous game. <laughs> Dr. Murder, are you, a, are you a fan of Mind Hunters? I am a Mind Hunter. Dr. Murder is uh, has his actually an actual doctor in I guess what's the field? Murder. Murder. <laughs> yeah, nice. All right, do we, can we go yet? We're we're like six minutes into this. We need to figure this out. Can somebody else speak while we're waiting? Yeah. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, sorry about the wait, everybody. Um, so we're going to run this product meetup a little differently than before. Um, in the past, uh, we've sort of been uh, uh, okay with people asking questions out loud, but uh, unfortunately, but that's really difficult for our note taker. We have a note taker on our side um, to to capture all the questions, and, and then we miss stuff, and uh, so that's not really helpful. So now we're, we have to make it mandatory, just so we all uh, so we get we can give you the best service. That all questions should always be sent in chat. And we will deal with the questions in order that it was sent, which is sort of what we do now. But right now, we also have some times where, oh, who is that? Who is that? Tia. Um, hey there. So it looks like we have a starry and sailing here. Yep. Can you guys hear me talking about these rules? Yes. yes. Okay, cool. I was, I, I was like, okay. So anyways, um, all questions need to be in chat. And if anybody starts talking sort of out loud as a follow-up, um, uh, we'll allow on the topic, but if you try to switch topic to, to ask another question, so let's say we're talking about high heels and uh, you know the first question is asked and somebody's like, okay, well, what about high heels in this way and this way? But if they try to switch topic, we're going to ask you to not do that and we'll talk over you at first and if you keep talking, then we're, we'll just, you know, we'll have to like mute you or something. Um, so let's just make sure all questions are in the chat. We'll deal with them in the order that they come in. Uh, that is just so we can make sure we're capturing all the feedback and we can answer questions properly. Okay. Um, that is what's happening. Um, now, uh, let's do a team intro. We've got a lot of us here, so I think we're all here now. So let's go ahead and get started. Stanley, since you're all the way to the right, my right, audience left. Okay, Stanley left. Uh, Nix, you go ahead and start. Are you just kidding? Okay, um, guess. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm Stanley. I'm the project director of First Hand I'm Nix. I'm a project manager for Sansar, helping out several teams stay on schedule. Hey there, I'm Kara. I'm project manager for Sansar. I'm Galileo. I'm the community manager for Sansar. Hi, I'm Astari, the design director on Sansar. I'm Lacey, marketing coordinator for Sansar. Harley, support team lead for Sansar. Bowden, product manager, also host of Sansar Top 5, which is happening after the product meetup. Wow. So wow. Sorry. Sorry. Shameless. Shameless yeah. plug. Shameless. Nice plug. And then I think that's all of us right now. And then we kicked a few out, and uh, you'll never need to know their name, so don't worry about it. Um, next, Stanley, this is you. Uh, can you guys hear me okay? Is the mic coming through? Yeah, we can hear yep, you. Yep, we can hear yep. you. Okay, great. Um, so, yeah, we've been working on quite a bit. Um, we've... I think we've already talked a little bit about this in like the Avatar 2.0, which we will just also review today. Um, we started talking about some of the quest systems that we've been developing and the XP system. Uh, and there's a few more things that we're just revealing as of today. Um, we already wrote a little bit about it in a blog post that went up yesterday. Um, but it's it's pretty exciting. Uh, we It's a lot of significant changes here and we're here to take uh, just describe to you what's going on what we have planned uh, and also just take some of the feedback or questions you have any concerns you have um, a lot of the questions you have we will uh, we're thinking a lot about how we can address you know this isn't a perfect system but we uh, we have long-term plans in mind um, so we're really open to hearing what your thoughts are because uh, we're building this uh, for, for you guys and uh, we want to make sure that uh, we're really addressing all of the, the concerns that you have. Uh, so first, we want to talk about uh, the Nexus uh, and what you will be doing in the Nexus. Um, uh, just a quick note, we've been holding a lot of our internal meetings there, so it's really cool. We've been getting a view of what it looks like, but we're, we're excited to share it with you uh, sometime in the next few weeks. 
Uh, we're planning on making this upcoming release next week if all goes well. Um, but you know, who knows what what issues may arise. So right now the plan is to release uh, next week. Um, Istari, do you want to start off by telling us about the Nexus and what we'll be doing there? Uh, sure, happy to. So the Nexus is essentially the central hub for Sansar. It uh, is a place that people can log into and immediately find other people and have some great social interactions. Uh, but also we have a series of quests that will flow through it um, with a story arc uh, starting in the tutorial when a new user first creates their avatar, uh, they'll be introduced to Agent Primus. Uh, he'll teach you a little bit about how to move around and teleport and do the basic functions of the world. But then you'll also find him in the Nexus and he'll uh, he'll guide people through the Nexus so they sort of, new users have a nice orientation to the world. Uh, but also that'll phase into a set of uh, story quests that will frame the entire virtual world for the user, uh, give a structure to it, introduce a socialite guild, an explorer's guild eventually, and eventually a creator's guild. Um, and and that basically gives you a, a nice framework for directed play. So users that come into the world have something to do. Uh, but the Nexus also has the prime portal at its center, and that's where you can access the entire universe. Uh, and we'll talk about that more as we get into the codex. Um, we'll get to the questions once we go through each of the items. Um, uh, next, um, uh, oh, and, and just just to just to remind you guys, uh, the XP system will be going out in this next release as well, and it'll be tied initially to the the quests, um, the quests that Istari was talking about. Uh, we will be leaving in the current quest that we have already, and if you've already completed those, we will be granting you. Uh, the XP you would have earned for already, uh, for the fact that you already completed them. So you'll get a small head start. Um, next, uh, Bowden, do you want to talk a little bit about the Codex? Yeah, sure. Um, so as many of you have probably read the, the blog post, and you might be somewhat familiar with the Codex, but I'll give a brief overview. Uh, so Istari just mentioned the, the Prime Portal and the Nexus. Uh, so in terms of this community and what we're familiar with, you can think of the Prime Portal as what used to be the Atlas. It is the place where all worlds are available and can be found. Um, so go to the Nexus, interact with the Prime Portal, and discover new worlds, worlds you haven't been to before. For worlds that you have been to before, that's when your codex comes into play. The codex is something that new users will get when they log in and, and actually go through Sansar's first time user experience. Um, and as they explore worlds, they will add them to their codex. Um, that is, you know, loosely speaking, the, the structure of the codex and how it interacts with the prime portal. Yeah, and just to carry on a little bit more about the codex and the nexus itself, uh, there are also a series of permanent portals uh, that we want to ensure allows for a really good discovery of content. So. Uh, one permanent portal in addition to the Prime Portal is going to, for example, have all the latest events that uh, creators put up. So um, if somebody wants to go attend a cool event, they can just walk over to the event portal and immediately access that, that information uh, in those worlds. Um, there'll be another one specifically for creators, and so we want to initially, because we don't have all of our algorithms stood up yet, we're going to be pointing it at the popular worlds. Um, we could have another portal that uh, we work with you guys on, a, on an algorithm that makes sense for discoverability. Maybe it's based on new worlds that are published. Maybe it's based on some other algorithm. And so these portals can evolve and change over time. Uh, and it would be great to work with you guys to figure out what would be the best permanent portal to add to the space that would help, uh, help you guys out. Uh, the other thing we're doing is we've got various business partners, as you know, um, We've been hosting some Monster Cat worlds, and so there'll be a permanent uh, Monster Cat portal there uh, as well. So uh, it's exciting in that we not only have the Prime portal, but we also have the ability to place other portals in the space that do specific things to help us out. That's a good point, Brian. Thank you for calling out the portals, because it reminds me of another element of the Codex, which I think is you know important to share with this group, is that 
If you've been to a place, so let's say you've been exploring Sansa and you've discovered a new world recently, you can still share a portal, grab that world's URL, paste it in chat, and share it with other people who have not been. Um, and then they can travel with you. And then it's added to their codex. Um, so there are many ways that people can discover new worlds, um, you know, social being one of them, the, the nexus being another, uh, looking at your, your friends and creators and seeing what worlds they've published recently. So there's, there's many ways to discover worlds. For new users, we expect the, the nexus to be the jumping off point, and then friends and socialization will begin to comprise a larger percentage of that discoverability. Um, yeah, that's, and that's Codex. Yeah, and the, the Codex, just real quickly, to, and I, I see a few uh, related questions in the stream here of chat, but just to echo um, echo that some of those thoughts. Yes, you you have your own personal Codex that you bring with you, uh, it's basically a little device that records um, all worlds and experiences that you've been to. Uh, it also allows you to interface with the Prime Portal. It allows you to walk up to a portal and activate it. So it's an object that has some fiction to it. Uh, and that could be cool in VR, uh, as well as desktop. But um, the nice thing about that is that you get to curate that list of worlds. So it's kind of like your personal book of locations that matter to you. It's not this massive list of everything uh, where especially for new users can get lost. Uh, it's your personal codex and you also have access <coughs> to your friends codex and all of their worlds. You have access to tap on a creator and immediately get all of their worlds. So hey, if you like a particular creator, you can bring them up with a click of a button and, and be able to navigate to their world. So discoverability is important to us uh, and this is kind of a foundational piece of imagining in the future that we'll find ways to optimize it and improve it, but um, the act of a user collecting these worlds as they travel around Sansar is an activity, and it's something that we can uh, reward players for as well. Um, let's quickly move on to avatars, and then Avatar 2.0, and then we will address some of the questions that have been uh, asked in chat. So. Kara, do you just want to give a quick overview of what's coming out for avatars? Yeah, that's right. Um, you know, we've talked a lot about Avatar 2.0 for the last couple of months. Um, so that's one of the things that's coming out uh, ideally next week. <coughs> um, so you'll be able to access, uh, but you know, body bone information of the face um, then, and additionally the other features that we mentioned were coming out. Um, you po also posted a blog a couple of weeks ago on what's coming out with Avatar 2.0. So I do encourage all of you to check it out. Um, I just pasted it in the chat. Um, as a reminder, you know, we have a creator program right now to help anyone who's interested in creating assets for Avatar 2.0. So if you'd like to be one of the, you know, the first creators to have Avatar 2.0 assets in the store, um, we're happy to help you test your items out. So if you'd like to submit them, um, feel free to uh, submit it through the sub submission portal on the help center. Um, and I can help uh, fair those to the team and give you feedback um, on those items. Yeah, and then additionally, um, one more thing, uh, since the, you know, the creator program is meant to um, run until we release after 2.0, so the last day of, the last day of submission will be around a day or two before the, we release, um, so if you submit it after, after 2.0 releases, um, we'll no longer um, handle any uh, feedback. All right, that's it. Thank you. Okay, um, I think that's all we. That's all the new stuff we had to share. We're, there's a lot more stuff planned, but we, uh, I'm sure that there's a lot of questions, uh, especially about how quests and the codex work. Um, and you know, we'll we'll take questions on Avatar 2.0 as well. Um, do we want to start with the, some of the questions from chat? Sure, I'll mm -hmm. take any questions, Galileo, that you want to throw my way for codex-related things. Uh, all right, so we're going to go in order here. Um, so the first question that we got was from Tea Cake. Is there a new AV update for Marvelous Designer? Uh, do you mean for the upcoming release next week? Tea Cake, do you want to clarify and chat? Yes, that's what. Tea yes. Tea oh, yeah. Means. So yes, there will be an update with Marvelous Designer. Um, it, uh, a few weeks ago, we alluded to having a new Marvel's Designer feature, which allows you to move, scale, and rotate Marvel's Designer clothing so that as you know, as we transition to 2.0, a lot of the 1.0 Marvel's Designer clothing will no longer fit as well since the avatar are much taller compared to what we have today. 
So those features will be implemented then uh, so that you can adjust your clothing. Um, and anyone who bought clothing on the store can adjust those clothing to fit their new avatars better. So that will, uh, yeah, so we'll, we're really releasing that next week. Um, and, and as a side note, we are also extending the same capabilities to accessories, so you'll be able to reposition accessories as well on your avatars. Like a lollipop, for instance. Perfect. Okay, uh, Jack asks, uh, well, Jack the Fox Otter, uh, once you're done, will the, ne oh, sorry, will the Nexus completely replace the Atlas, or will that remain an alternative option? Uh, the Atlas, as we know it today, um, will exist in the Nexus. There will be changes, of course. It will not be the exact same UI or, or you know, interactions, um, but the Atlas, generally speaking, will exist in the, the Nexus, um, and the Codex is something new that previously really didn't exist, um, and that's always with you. All something right. I want to also clear up about that, which I don't think we were specific about, um, events we are treating as slightly different. Um, uh, we mentioned that you can only use the codex to visit worlds that you have been to before or that you have some sort of social connection to, and you have to go to the prime portal to go to brand, brand new worlds, which you can search for and browse. Uh, events we consider slightly different. Um, because an event, we want people to be able to visit when it's happening. There's no travel restrictions to events. You will be able to see all uh, upcoming and live events in your codex, uh, even if you've never been to that world before. Um, we, we felt like it was important that we wanted people to have easy access to events, especially if they only at last an hour or two. So if you want to go to an event, you can access them all from your codex, or if you're in the Prime Portal, uh, in the Nexus, you can still access them from the Prime Portal as well. Good point. All right. You want to keep rolling with questions? Yep, I got more questions. Um, Full Spectrum <coughs> asks, what is the purpose of limiting access to all of Sansar? Is there a reason we can't keep an atlas with us in our options? I think Astari you know, alluded to the reasons why um, this, this would be beneficial. But I mean, Astari, if you want to kind of elaborate on you know, the story and the nexus and the space and uh, sure. to whatever extent you can. Yeah, so uh, really, the, it's a multifaceted thing. Um, there's not a quick, easy answer. But let me say that um, you know, we, we evaluated where Sansar was at uh, by the end of last year, beginning of this year. And it was clear that the current Atlas model for a new user, now let's keep it into perspective, like somebody trying out Sansar for the first time, they're presented with this massive list of possible things to do. And they might randomly click on one of these experiences and then it might be empty and there might not be a lot for them to do. And so we, we identified that one, we, we need to have a sense of place, a virtual world that they could come into, uh, get excited by uh, some characters and story and questing and leveling and give them a sense of purpose in Sansar. And it's really just a framework uh, that wraps over the top of everything. Um, we wanna make sure that as they come in through the tutorial and into the Nexus, um, they're guided to here's the prime portal, here's how you can find awesome experience and content uh, that the creators have made. And so really all this is to ensure that the people that do come in to Sansar have a, uh, an experience that uh, they can stick around and, and enjoy the content that you guys create long term. Um, and you know there, that's, that's one of the things. The other thing is that the Nexus can be a great social experience for them. So when they come into Sansar, it, it should feel alive. There should, like, look at this room. I look around at all these avatars and I'm freaking super excited, right? Like, having people together in one place, uh, even if it's transient, uh, is, is a fun experience. And so that will be uplifting for new users. And if we can get them to stick around, then they're going to start looking for your all's experiences and, and, and going deeper. And that's really, I think, part of the driving force behind what we're doing. Um, the, the activity of having a curated uh, codex that's with you, uh, those are all experiences that matter to you. They're things that you want. Not all of us have the same wants and needs. Some want gamification, some want social, some want to explore. There's all kinds of different reasons for different people to play the game. And so now your codex is gonna matter. You're gonna bring that thing up and they're gonna, each of those worlds, you're gonna have a memory there, you're gonna have a reason there, there's a purpose. 
uh, as opposed to having this massive atlas. So you can still get to that massive atlas uh, quickly and easily by just going to the to the Prime Portal. It's actually, once you see it, it's pretty amazing. Um, and, and I think you'll like it. But, uh, you know, there's all kinds of other functions and features we want to ensure that, that smooth out these rough edges because you guys do bring up a lot of good points. We've thought through this, uh, obviously, for many months. And so totally agree with you on some of the friction points and we want to smooth those out over time uh, so work with us give us those suggestions and, and we'll do our best um, Stanley can you maybe just sort of reiterate one more time about the social side yeah. of, uh, 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 of what we're intending here yeah uh, the other thing that is um, uh, oh I want to uh, as I go into that I want to address something that full spectrum since this was his original question what's I he understands the benefit for new users it's not easy, easy to understand why we limit access to SansR to experienced users. Uh, that question makes sense, uh, but in the context of what we're trying to do here, an experienced user, by definition, will already then have many places listed in their codex as, as they're experiencing SansR. So they may, like if a brand new world comes up, they, won't, they obviously won't have that in their codex and they will have to discover it through the mechanisms we are, we're planning on putting out, just like a new user. Um, but the primary benefit we see here is um, you, we want Santar to feel alive and experienced users uh, will benefit by the fact that we will have more users around, more people uh, to interact with, more people to, uh, to engage with all the cool stuff you guys are making. Um, one of the biggest concerns about Santar is there's nothing to get people to stick around. Um, and we know that you guys have a lot of thoughts about creation tools and, and how we can improve the quest system and other systems. But if there aren't users around to participate in that, it's, it's, we're not really uh, getting to where we want Sansar to be. So uh, we, we are thinking about the user experience and we're constantly trying to figure out ways to make sure that experienced users uh, are also not feeling like they are ultimately restricted for no reason. Uh, we, we feel much more comfortable making sure that your experience in Sansar uh, is tied to, uh, I guess not a right way to put it, your, your, because I don't want to confuse experience with experience points, um, but as you are earning more worlds, as you are gaining in levels, you actually have that progression of feeling like you've been in Sansar for a long time, and it shows based off how, where you can travel, the places you can share with people. Um, the other, I won't get into it yet, but we have other plans on adding milestones to uh, your experience in Sansar. Um, going back to the social side, uh, we want to make sure that social interactions mean more. So the fact that you can share a world with somebody uh, is valuable because then, get, then that gets added to their codex. And we want to encourage that sort of behavior. Um, it, to us, it makes sense to make social interaction more directed as well and exploration more directed rather than um, everyone just has, uh, new users especially, just have access to every world uh, without context of what, uh, which ones are interesting. Uh, it's something we saw a lot in user testing when people would go into Zanzar for the first time. They would see the Atlas, uh, you know, a minute or two after coming into Zanzar, and they would not know where to go, and they weren't sure what they were looking at. Um, so we felt like we really needed to have a much better handle on the first five minutes of someone's experience, uh, someone's experience in Zanzar. So those are some of the reasons that we are uh, moving in this direction. Yeah, and then... I think Astari also kind of you know, alluded to where some of the social features. Um, I referenced, you know, portals, social shares, and, and chat. Those will still stand as, as ways for people to discover new worlds. Friends are also another way that you will discover new worlds outside of the Nexus. So if you have friends, your codex will say, oh, these are your friends, these are worlds. Um, and you can travel directly to those worlds. So friending is another way that social interactions kind of increases the available worlds that someone has to discover. Okay, so that was a lot. Um, let's go back to the questions list. Uh, Love Anime asks, could there be a Sansar official quest task that encourages exploration of Sansar's many experiences? I think we've kind of covered that. Does anybody want to uh, just sort of reiterate what we've said? Uh, yeah, there, there definitely will be uh, in time a Explorer's Guild, and part of the questing there will be to journey forth and, and find other worlds. And look, we want to want to be clear here that a lot of these tools will be available to you so you should be able to bring up uh, 
the questing tool and send people on quests across experiences, you guys should be able to have access to the same uh, fixed portal asset that we have. And you know, stand up your own hub, stand up your own quest with your own. Uh, what, what would you like to see? <laughs> Uh, but, but yeah, we'll have some uh, baked into the, the next storyline. I uh, would love to see you guys carry some of these things forward. All right, cool. Uh, we already answered f uh, Dalibut feedback. I hope we'll be able to access the codex from within an experience and not just the Nexus. Yes, I think we've answered that, Dalibut. It's going to be with you all the time. Um, Ryan Schultz, uh, we already answered that. Okay. Um, feedback. Jack says, as I understand... As I understand it, the codex is a is like a place history that will remain in that will remain a UI element. But I'm really afraid that you won't be able to access the prime portal without physically going there. I believe that is the case. Does somebody want to back back that up? Yep, that is the case. The prime portal is <coughs> accessed in, uh, in the nexus. Okay. Um, oh, all right. One more thing I will mention just about the first half of that. The codex, yes, it is registering places you have been to before. If you go to some place and you're thinking, yeah, hey, this place wasn't interesting. I don't ever plan on coming back here. Uh, we will allow you to, to remove things from your your uh, history list. Um, you can always re-add them by returning there. But if you don't want it to see it in there because it's just taking up space, you can always remove it. Oh, cool. So it's curated. I didn't even know that. Okay. Uh, Loki asks, will the codex allow us to res portals for events? Yes. I mean... So, uh, basically, you can create portals to places that you have access to, um, whether it's access from your codex or from the prime portal, or um, you will be able to create a portal to those places, including events. Cool. That actually, um, I would need to check on that and, and verify whether or not that is the case. Um, currently, events do not have the option to create portals. Oh, yeah, you're right. I was thinking about... Yeah, you're worlds. Right. Yeah, worlds will worlds will maintain that functionality. Um, portals to events is something we look at as yeah, that's a no brainer. We we absolutely need to do that. So um, it's it's not going to be there for the R thirty six release, but it is something that we actively want to do um, to improve events and make it easy for people to attend. So thank you for calling that out. And just uh, for everybody's awareness, the R36 release is referring to the Welcome to the Nexus release. Sometimes we uh, have different names internally and externally. Um, Loki asks, uh, will the history of the worlds be visited? Wait, will the history of the worlds visited be sold to evil third parties? I assume you're talking about Medhew. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, we, we just sell everything. No, it won't. I mean, we currently have no plans um, on using that information and selling it to third parties. I'm not not going to say whether or not we ever can or will do that, but that's, that's not the point of the change. Um, okay. Great. Uh, zero cheese. Will I still be able to drop a portal in a group of others, or will it be limited to strictly copy-paste the URL? Also, so let's answer that. He's got two questions here, and then feedback. This is pretty long. There, okay, let's start with the first one. Um, yeah, the first one. So, if you have been to a world, um, you can create a portal to that world. And anyone who has or has not been will be able to go with you to that world. Sorry if I use the world term too many times. But, um, yes, you'll be able to create portals. People can join through that portal. Okay, the next part of uh, Zero's question. Also, will we be able to copy, paste, and or drop a portal to an event? Yeah, we just answered that. Um, we, uh, we always try to drop portals to events, and that is not a feature of the current atlas. I feel like allowing the users to share linking methods to events should be a priority. Great feedback. We just answered it, so we're on the same page there. Uh, Asha Sakaira, did they say if you'll be able to search for an experience by name? Um, we, we did not actually say that, but yes, you will be able to search for experiences the same way you do today on the Atlas. Um, when, when a user goes to the Prime Portal, search will still function. And then I think there's search in your codex as well, right? Yes, yes. Um, I imagine this group is probably more on the how do people are going to discover my things. But yeah, the search will maintain across codex and, and the Prime Portal. All right. Um, next, we have Solus. How do we submit the new clothing item to update and store, and how long do we have? Um, can you expand a little bit more on what you mean by how long do you have? Uh, well, I know we have a one-time update, 
chance to update. Long being, I mean, is do we have like three months to do it, or can we take our time to do it? I don't think we have an expi expiry date for the up one-time upgrade. Um, we, we can definitely look into that, but currently there's no expiration. Nope, um, I Yep. That's okay. great. Thanks, Bowden. Um As for um, how to update the item, it'll be very similar in fashion, I believe, to how you update scripts currently. So we'll definitely have a doc you know documentation out there on release on how you can update your items in the store. And when will this start? Um, this will start once we release after 2.0. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, no problem. I, I actually have a solid answer for that. We will uh, eliminate the one-time upgrade functionality when we release the proper upgrade system. Oh. Hey. Nice. You when, when will you be? Yeah. When will you be releasing the upgrade system? Uh, we we Jeez. we don't have a <laughs> exact time frame for that. Uh, just just trying to reassure you, it'll it'll be around until oh, we so have something be better. Going until we can do it, or, it uh, until we have a better system in place. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Follow up, which is uh, quite nice. Uh, Zero Trees asks, do we have an official release date for App 2.0 yet? We're planning on next week. Um, yeah. It's happening. Okay. It's Loki. almost here. Loki Elliot yeah, asks. There, oh, go ahead. There's a lot of bugs we're stomping, so uh, we're, we're going to try our best for next week. All right. Love to hear about bug stomping. Okay. Jack asks, my question is more related to if you physically need to go to the Nexus to use the Atlas or select the world or world select UI. So do you have to go to the Nexus to use the, the, to the, Nexus to use the Atlas? You have to go to the Nexus to use the Prime Portal. Um, <coughs> there will be many ways to discover new worlds, uh, and most of those new discovery mechanisms <coughs> will be either in other experiences with creators creating portals um, or friending, you know, people sharing links in chat. If you don't discover a new world through those mechanisms, then going to the Nexus and interacting with the Prime Portal will be the, the primary way of world discovery. Okay. Um, Loki Elliot asks, what does the codex look like? Um, yeah, so the codex and the prime portal have had some style updates. Um, they're not too divergent from you know, the Atlas UI. They will still comprise a, a larger portion of your screen um, and will be opened from the wrist menu if you're in VR. Um, Loki, I, I believe I did see your comment in Discord in, in terms of saying it would be great if it was, you know, not right in the middle of my screen. Um, I think we have a lot of plans with making the codex and VR interactions much more compelling. So I'll stay tuned for those UI updates. Okay. Next up, we have Evo Av. There is a certain pattern to the new features being released, starting with Quest that seem to turn Sansar into a specific type of game. Is Linden Lab planning to turn Sansar into a platform of experiences focused on a certain theme? XP, quest, overarching story. These basically make it feel like a role-playing game. Um, I can speak at least to part of that. Um, you know, I, I think that some of those elements are, are definitely there, and we are building out what I look at as kind of like a framework. So there's an overarching XP system, there's an overarching questing system. There is a, a virtual world that has a, a lightweight story attached to it so that you, know, you have some fiction to kind of wrap your head around. But somebody mentioned Ready Player One earlier. And, you know, in, in, in that world, anything goes, right? And, and I think what's important here is everyone sitting in this room. Uh, each of you has the ability to either latch on to that overarching story and carry it on with us. Uh, you also have the ability to make your own incredible worlds and stories uh, and experience is totally different than anything we can imagine and that's the part that makes Sansar magical is, is what each of you can do. And so I think it's really more of a framework uh, to make sure that players have a, a cohesion and, and a, a cool experience and some direct play but it's up to you guys to take it where you want. Okay, cool. Um... Ryan, sh nope, that's the wrong one. Sorry, Ryan. Ruby, uh, the events tab question. Will there be a tab for currently live events? Um, events will have a dedicated, <coughs> um, a dedicated section for the Prime Portal in terms of discovery. Um, and when you go to the Codex, it will also have its own 
dedicated um, section. You know, the, the default will be live events are, are the, is the content that is in front of the rest of, of content. So live content's prioritized in terms of surfacing it to users. All right, heads up to the Sansa team. We've got about uh, 20 minutes left, uh, but a, a whole bunch of questions. So um, not that I'm saying this to anybody because I think we've all been answering things pretty uh, economically, but let's try to make these answers quick. Okay. Um, Jack asks, uh, oh, no, Ryan Schultz asks, is, no, geez, I keep going back to him. Cerberus, will the players always spawn in the Nexus when logging in, or can they, if they found an experience, like, choose that as their spawn point, like choose a home experience? So for the first release, um, the plan is to spawn people in the Nexus. Um, we, we're partially because we right now the home space it's not going away it's still accessible um, but we felt like the home space didn't make a lot of sense for people so <coughs> it dramatically didn't match the nexus um, we'd like to hear your feedback on how that approach feels um, oh, we mean, do have I, sorry i mean more like if they can at some point choose their own spawn point like placing a home stone if they like an experience that they say like okay instead of having to go through the nexus always i directly want to jump there and that they then can for themselves define when I log in, I want to spawn at this experience, for example. Yeah, that's that's a that's an interesting idea. Um, for the moment, no. Uh, for the moment, you'll be spawning in the Nexus. Um, we do have long-term plans of what we want to do the home space, and it will probably relate to feedback like that of if we can custom if you can customize your own spawn endpoint. So thanks for that. So thanks for that feedback. Okay, cool. Next up, Labancore. I noticed we have new badges on user profiles that say early access. Any new status slash symbols and achievements in the works? And uh, what is the cutoff date for getting the early access achievement? Uh, I don't think we're ready to talk about that quite yet. Um, yeah, we did hint at that. Uh, we have more plans on that coming, but I don't think we're ready to discuss that yet. Um, cutoff? I, yeah, I don't think we're ready to talk about that just yet either. Okay, so not in the near future anyway. Uh, yeah, great question. Uh, Ryan Schultz, finally, uh, I actually get to your question. Is the Nexus replacing the Sansar Social Hub? And I believe a follow-up question was, what will be happening to the current Sansar Social Hub? Um, the answer is yes, the Nexus is replacing the purpose that the Social Hub is currently filling. Um, and I believe the Social Hub will stay around, perhaps with a new life or purpose. Yeah, um, but actually, real quick on that, um, yeah, go for we it. are repurposing it with uh, a few new quests that will flow through it. Uh, so it's not being retired, it's being repurposed. Oh, good. Experience recycling. That's my favorite. There you go. Um, okay, Jack asks, the biggest problem I see with the Nexus solution is that there are more steps involved for people to discover new places. Also, one additional loading screen. How do you plan on ensuring that people won't just stick to their favorites because they have them on quick access? Um, and we'll still discover new places. Um, you know, in terms of, of that concern, uh, you know, I think, again, as Star addressed the, the reasons why we believe that the, the Nexus and Prime Portal will be beneficial, even if it does add, you know, one step to that discovery. Um, and you know, we will be watching how people are joining worlds, um, how are they discovering new worlds, what mechanisms are they using to travel. Um, we'll be watching that pretty closely once this change rolls it out and um, acting on that information. Great. Okay, next, Tia asks, ha have there been uh, conversations regarding the commission rate on the marketplace? Uh, I can go ahead and answer this. We're going to have a, uh, a an office hours specifically related to the tax um, next Monday, I believe, and you'll see that on the events page. It'll be either Monday or Tuesday, and we'll have a blog post going out on those day, uh, on that day um, that we have the actual meeting, so you'll have t time to uh, check it out. Um, so, uh, yes, we will hold that uh, next week, so if you're interested in that or if that affects you, please, uh, please come to that. And if you can't make it, of course, um, drop your questions in Discord or send them to me somehow, and uh, that will uh, be streamed so you can watch even if you can't get to your get to your Sansar. Okay, next. Uh, Luov asks, I'm about to lose the good shape of this <laughs> avatar in the new release, Avi. As I understand it, uh, uh, the new av is not very feminine looking and will be stuck with that for possibly six months. Is it, good, uh, is it a good idea to release it now, not having a good shape, as uh, this might be a put-off to me and surely new users? Okay. 
Farrah, do you want to take that one? Yeah, I can take that one. Um, yeah, so I, the question is, you know, if we should put out the, the new avatars, right? Um, so they, one of the reasons why we're, you know, why we double down on, you know, getting face deformation as soon as possible is because we were getting a lot of feedback from users, especially new, user, new users that, you know, the default avatars were not great. They look they look terrible and we admit, you know, they kind of look old. And so that's why, you know, we want to push this as soon as possible so that, you know, when, you know, whether it's existing users or new users, um, you know, you can go around the world with, you know, better looking avatars. Um, yeah, so the face, you know, the body might not be as great, but, you know, once you have body deformation, the idea is, you know, you can adjust that to conform the body to as much as you want, you know, whether you have more shapely hips or, you know, larger breasts, um, that's something that, you know, we will support later on. But the idea is, um, you know, a lot of users, especially in VR, usually, you know, when you look at another user, you're looking at their face. And so the focus really is on the face um, rather than the body as a first step. So that at least, you know, when people are going around talking to other users, and you can kind of appreciate like a, you know, better looking avatars, um, as well as just like a better community in general, um, instead of the current default avatar, which we have right now, which isn't really great looking, um, unfortunately. Uh, I, I, I also want to mention from a production standpoint, um, the idea that we would build an internal avatar, build out a fully functioning face system, and then not release it until we can finish the body deformation system uh, would prevent a lot of challenges. Um, it would mean that you guys would still be making content for something that was going away. We wanted to make sure that that change date happened as soon as possible um, so that you could start building for the new base. Uh, we understand that um, there's a lot more to come that that year there's a lot more you guys are waiting on for body deformation um, but I, it did make sense for us to hold on to this and keep supporting two systems and letting you guys build for an old system when we had something coming up yes that's correct right. yeah you thanks for that an ugly body that's all i'm saying you know i think it should be better to wait that's all Right, but uh, to add to what Stanley just mentioned, um, yeah, so that there was a big concern about, you know, as we stick to the current body, um, the idea is like, you know, more and more, you know, items will be created for after 1.0, and then once we do make the shift to 2.0, then, uh, you know, not only a lot more items are going to be affected, but a lot more users um, as we grow will be affected, and that, you know, will not be as great um, because then, uh, you know, we'll have to deal with a lot of, a lot more broken content in the store, essentially. Yeah, that's almost, I mean, it's like for the creators, it's a good thing, growing pains and we move forward. Um, it's just all the new users coming in. How do you, I mean, we have to explain to them. Are you going to explain to them why they can't morph their bodies or change their bodies? They can't do that now either. Or, yeah, exactly. Well, no, but there, there's things on the store they can buy. I'm just saying, I'm, yeah. I'm thinking of new users and the confusion. Yeah, we're we're. I mean, as a creator, it's cool what you're doing because then I have time to get my stuff perfect before it all rolls out. But new users coming in, they're the ones that'll go back and tell ten people, you know, blah 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 about Sansar. Yeah, and and so we're thinking a lot. I mean, this is a little bit changing topic, and I want to move on. But we are thinking a lot about the user experience. It's not just the avatar experience, but also like the navigation and the gameplay systems and all that. So. We are very focused on the user experience. I think when it comes down to were we were we planning on waiting until we were ready with a with Avatar 2.0 body deformation or getting Avatar 2.0 early, it came down to a decision of we want to get it out there for you guys earlier rather than let you keep working on an old system. All right, if, all right. If we want to continue with that topic, let's drop the question in the chat. And we can come back to it. Um, next, Disney asks, uh, isn't this going to result in links and portals being spammed all over the place, all over the uh, all the time? Um, so, with that concern in particular, um, we we did think about that, especially in terms of the Nexus and the Prime Portal. Um, so there will be an effort made to have certain areas of the Nexus um, not eligible for placing portals. Um, and that's mostly to address that very concern, which is if people have to go somewhere to travel, we don't want there to be you know, behaviors that just spam portals. Um, now, in terms of portals being placed in creators' worlds, I think on that level we're fine. Um, and in people sharing portals elsewhere throughout the worlds, um, I, I don't think we're concerned about that yet. Again, it will be a behavior that we watch to see. Um, if it is a problem, we'll, we'll try and 
develop solutions to solve it. All right, so Asha Sakaira, when will proper categories like shoes and dresses uh, be added to the store website? Kara, do you want to take that one? Oh, sorry, I was copying a question. Uh, what was the question? When will proper categories like shoes and dresses be added to the store website? Yeah, so that's something that we are adding into our roadmap. Um, it's not going to be in the next couple of months, but that is something that we are shooting to work on sometime soon. Okay, cool. Uh, Ruby Gaming. Can we take a group photo after the meeting? Everybody, if you want to stay around, let's get one of those. Uh, T Cake asks, uh, so you can stand in your lookbook area and look what's going on from the codex. Like, uh, I guess the answer is, do you have to go into the next to use your codex, or can you look in your codex in, in your home space? The codex will be available everywhere the Atlas is available today. Um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to think of a few e exceptions, and maybe some screens don't actually currently have the Atlas available, but if you can access the Atlas today, you'll be able to access the codex too. I think there's, places. there's one small exception, which I think everyone will need to go through at least once. Um, we are updating the tutorial quest, um, and you will, I mean, we're going to want everyone to go through that. It's a necessary part of the story. Um, and I think in the tutorial world, you are not allowed to access the codex the first time you're in it. But once you're out, which takes a few minutes, then I think you have access to it. Yep, you must first collect it. That's right. You have to first get, get your codex. Um, okay, Ari Lin. Will a web access mechanism still exist as it does now for the Atlas? So, like, uh, right now we have atlas.sansar.com. I.e., can we see what's out there without loading Sansar up? Um, yes. Uh, as in this next release, the web portion of Sansar in, in relation to worlds will remain. Um, your ability to discover worlds through that mechanism will remain. Um, in the not too distant future, that will also experience some changes, um, mostly in terms of content discovery. So we'll keep a subset of worlds there to be discovered. Um, the full list of worlds will, will be in Sansar, will be through those social shares and um, you know, the Prime Portal itself. Um, now in terms of your individual creation files, those will remain. Um, so a person's ability to promote their own content or to have people discover their content on the web, that, that's not going anywhere with those exceptions that I mentioned. I hope that answers the question. Okay. Uh, Wizintel from Twitch asks, uh, completely off topic, where are we with avatar inventory for quest rewards and such? I don't think we have an update on that right now. Um, yeah, sorry, no update on that right now. All right. Um, General Zod, how does the Nexus world discovery work? Is it random, or will you have a list of worlds just like in the Atlas now? Also, what is the order of these worlds? What will it be based on? Sorry, can you repeat the question one more time? Yeah. Uh, how does the Nexus world discovery mechanism work? Is it random, or will you have a list of worlds just like in the Atlas? Also, when the uh, worlds appear in the Codex or the Prime Portal, what is the order of them? Uh, is it based on popularity, sure. new, new creation, that kind of stuff? Um, so, uh, in terms of the Prime Portal, most of the most of the categories and sort orders those are carrying over. We actually didn't make dramatic changes to the existing you know, discover functionality on the atlas. Um, now your codex will of course have you know, some new items that didn't exist before. Mostly the the places or the worlds that you have visited in Sansar. Um, and if I'm, I'm not mistaken, that the default is recently visited. So. You'll be able to go to your codex, you know, see the worlds that you visited, and that that list will be, um, you know, in the order that you visited. And Stanley mentioned earlier, if you want to remove a world from that list, you can. So you can curate that as much as you like. Um, all the other categories, such as my friends, favorites, those those also carry over to the the codex. Just to reiterate, the people's favorites today will be carried over as people's favorites, and um, we have been collecting visit history and we'll also be populating people's codex with about the last two-ish months of travel data. So you won't you won't have a blank codex for those who have stuck around for a while. All right. We've got about five minutes left and we've got a bunch of questions left. So again, uh, time is of the essence and maybe if we need to, we can stick around to answer some of these uh, a little bit longer. 
um, which we'll cut into Sansar top five uh, time. Yeah, um, top five. But uh, it, it depends what we think is more uh, necessary right now. Granddad got Mojo. Do I have to go to the Nexus to edit and test an experience? Um, no. Y your worlds will be available from your codex. Uh, and you will always be able to access your worlds via the um, you know, creation panel that you have access today and copy those links and, and travel. Okay, great. Uh, I think Full Spectrum had the same question. Um, as a creator, if I want to come in and edit my experience, will I first have to go to the Nexus? That doesn't sound like it's the case. Uh, Ghost Van Vin, uh, hello. Tell us about the morphs for avatars and when they will be released. I think we t covered that a little bit earlier. Um, so we're going to go past it. Loki Elliot, will there be walls in the Nexus for people to sit on in gangs like in the social hub? The answer is yes, Loki, I've seen it. Naya asks, uh, question, how many XPs are part of the initial... I don't know what this. I don't know if you're talking about experience points, Naya, or the experiences. Um, how many experiences are part of the initial nexus going to be available? How is that determined? Are you giving us categories, or going to use something like the fe oh these are experiences, or going to use something like the featured experiences as the first ones? Um, so, also I guess a worthwhile update. Um, experiences are from now on being referred to as worlds. That will that will be part of this next release. Um, we are not limiting the number of worlds in the Prime Portal discovery. Um, there will be categories like we have today. I think events is going to be top of the list. Um, and then perhaps, actually I can look at the exact list right now. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll have the same categories um, as defined on the Atlas today. Uh, we're not introducing categories in this release that users are defining. Okay, uh, next we have Naya. I oh know we just did that, Carmel. Will Sansar go down when the changeover happens? If so, how long do you predict this will be for? Um, I, go ahead. Uh, cur current estimate is four hours. We're hoping to get out uh, faster than that, but uh, that is what we're bracing for in uh, hopefully worst case scenario. Uh, we have a lot of content rolling out with this release, and we want to make sure it's all polished and ready uh, by the time we let people in. Okay, we've got a real quick feedback from Al Yahadi. Uh, it would be nice if we could see which experience our friends are at just by clicking their profile instead of having to TP to them. Uh, it'd be nice just to know where you're going. So that's some good feedback. Is that well, on the roadmap? the feature request list. Dope, thank you. Zero Cheese asks, uh, following Solus's question, can you have a customized tab or something in a lookbook for when people are working on their avatars and it just says coming soon so new users can see, even though you, don't, you can't do everything yet, that it is on the roadmap? So like a coming soon for the body, is that what you're saying? For body information? Zero Cheese, why don't you go ahead and type that, um, and we'll go and move, move to the next question. Uh, full Spectrum, I think this will probably be our last question. Uh, full Spectrum, can you type uh, in a search term into the Prime Portal? Is the Prime Portal, there's a lot of questions here. Okay, can you type a search term into the Prime Portal? I believe we answered yes. that. I think the answer is yes. Is the Prime Portal a UI or a thing you interact with? It's a thing you it interact with. It is a with. thing you interact with that brings up a UI. Yeah, so it's a, it's a thing first, UI second. And if we interact with it, how can we type in a search term? Um, you type in search terms like you today. There's a search box and you're just going to, in the UI, type in whatever the thing is you want to search for. All right, I believe Zero is finishing up his question. Uh, users can know that you will soon be able to customize your avatar. Yeah, we can just do a little pop-up there. I'm sure we can we can think about that. Thanks for the feedback. Yeah, we'll, we'll think about it. Thanks for the suggestion. And I think we got through them all. Good job, team. Uh, TK uh, has one. There's a question from Cerberus. Where is it? Uh, I'll, I'll get it in there. Okay. Cerberus, I'm really excited to see your question. All right, um, here's Cerberus' question. This will be our last one. If I understood it right, events will be easily accessible and that the places the event is happening will be put into the codex. So an event is a good way to promote your place to people that will not lead to people just posting test events to get their place in the... Uh, okay, sorry, Chris. Yes. This is a little, yeah. So I think I understand the point and I'll address it. Um, yes, that is certainly the intent of the, the event system. So uh, in this release... We're not going to support that, but quickly following it up, the way events will work is when you go to create an event, you are going to choose one of your worlds to link that event to. Um, so when someone attends your event, they will unlock that world if they haven't unlocked it already. Uh, so that's, that's the intent, and we will be following up with that in the release very soon after. 
Um, however, his question was about will that result in people creating spam, right. spam and test events just to get people into worlds? Um, uh, possibly. Um, we are we're looking into ways of like we well, as we were building out the system, we were thinking of all the ways that could be abused. Um, that took us sort of down a rabbit hole of uh, how much moderation we need to apply. Um, so it's it's very possible. Um, but we want to build the system, and then we want to also address the problems and, and evaluate them as they're happening. Uh, we certainly want uh, the events list that you see to be filled with interesting content and interesting events. Um, so if it ends up being a list of spam events, we're, we definitely want to do something about that. Yeah, just if I can bring up a, a point of support about that. We do currently have guidelines for events. So I think definitely one way that can be mitigated is if something is obviously spam, it's not going to stay on the events list. As long as Speaking of events, we have an event coming up that's actually started. So It's starting right was, now. Yeah, if there are no other questions, I'm going to run to the other event. Hopefully see some of you guys there. All right. Um, so we had a group photo requested, so let's do one of those yes. real quick, and I will drop a, a, a portal to this um, event. Small people in front. Thank yes. <laughs> <laughs> come on, come on. Pitter -patter. Listen to all the footsteps. <laughs> <laughs> okay, midgets in front. <laughs> all right, everybody, get up here. Nioba, Adi G, are you listening? Asha Sakaya Ra, Thimble Much, Adi G, Joe Williams, Jack, get up. You guys have passed flying colors. All right, I'm going to get a good picture here. I need a people in front, please. Smile. Smile. Wait, wait, wait. Here we go. I'm right. so no space. <laughs> uh, My wings keep getting in the way. If you have a Twitter, tweet this. Um, share it on whatever, all your social networks. That's how we get new players. All right. Awesome. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Galileo. Guys. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and drop a portal right now, so get ready for this. Awesome, guys. Thank oh, I guess that, that, that did not work. <laughs> so uh, I'm just going to post the event uh, in chat here. Why didn't that not work? There's got to be a way for that to work. Hold on. Are we allowed to turn our mics on now? You can turn your <laughs> mic on. Do it. Yay, talking. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being patient, you guys. I did talking once. I know about this. <laughs> there it is. Okay, hit that portal up. Wait, wait. Smash that portal. There you go.